Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Now Let's Review, and we're going to be reviewing this pretty fun bike, the GeForce ZM Next on Now Let's Review. All right, so if you haven't uh, taken a look at this with your eyeballs yet, uh, just take a second. As you can see, um, this looks like a motorcycle. And I think that that's really what they were going for with this. Yeah, I think if you're looking for an e-bike and you're looking for more of a moped, this might be for you. I would think of this more as a moped <laughs> than an e-bike, and here's why. It's got pedals, obviously, so mm -hmm. it's technically an e-bike, but it is heavy. This weighs about 80 pounds, and so uh, it's not gonna fit on most bike racks, and it's not gonna be kind of accepted on most bike paths. So I think if you were looking for something with a long range and that is comfortable, Think of this as a moped and then let's get on with the review with that in it, mind. Yeah, don't think of this as an e-bike, okay? The pedals are here, I would say mostly just for regulation's sake, um, than like something that you're gonna go for like a bike ride for. The seat is nice and comfortable, it's not made for pedaling. This has a nice 750 watt motor with 1300 watts peak, um, and that's gonna basically take this at uh, high speed. Yeah, so top speed 28 miles an hour, which is typically a class three bike, so in some places that's illegal, and so you wouldn't unlock it that far. Other places it's fine, you do your own work in your jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. um, this. This, by the way, is not the gas tank. This is the battery. And you can get this version in a, with a second battery if you want to. So let's talk about this version. This is $16.99 currently on their website, which is kind of amazing, sub $2,000 for what we're gonna talk about here today. But for $2,000, you can get it with a second battery, which increases the range considerably. And let's talk about range for a second. Um, I am not even going to talk about the pedal assisted ranges. Um, I'm gonna talk throttle only. Okay. Um, I just wanna be realistic here because if you buy something like this, yes, you might pedal, but I'll tell you right now, the pedals don't keep up with th the top speed of mm -hmm. the bike. So uh, let's just throw that out the window because I don't care. Okay, so you wanna just know throttle only. So throttle on only. this version with one battery is 37 miles and that's mainly tested on flat ground with very few stops. And a light a person. 180 pound person, yeah. a normal person. Um, if you wanna get the second battery, that range supposedly doubles to 74 miles and that again is throttle only. Um, these ranges are pretty good. Um, really I, I would expect it to drop if you, you know, add any amount of hills at all, if you add any extra weight, whether that be on yourself or a uh, passenger or cargo, and um, if anything is, is off in terms of tires, make sure that your tires are at the proper PSI that's going to get you the best range. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. If you do lower the pressure on your tires, you'll get a nicer ride, like a softer ride for some people who like that. But yeah, it'll re really lower your range. I personally hate it because it, it does make the tires a little too smushy. They almost have too much grip. Hmm. And then when you go into some turns and stuff like that, it can start to feel really wonky and really weird. So I typically keep the PSI uh, right at the recommended that's written right on the tire. Now it's interesting, we've done a bunch of fat tire e-bike reviews and a lot of those have big wheels. And so the bike looks weird. This has 20 inch wheels, so four inch wide tires by 20 inch. And that gives it more of this kind of motorcycle moped look. And they did a lot to make sure that this thing looks like a motorcycle. Obviously the, the tank and this sort of sweeping line here. Also this giant honking piece of aluminum that's on both sides. Again, this is why it is not an e-bike. You're buying it for the styling and the performance of what this is. Let's talk about the full suspension. So you get a front suspension with 110 millimeters of throw and you get rear suspension. So it's a nice ride. Now the suspension is nothing to write home about. Uh, the suspension actual componentry, they're not particularly well made or anything like that. Um, will it soak up some pretty serious bumps? I think so. Um, but will it be like a buttery smooth ride? No. So let's talk about whether you would take this off-road or is this mainly for on-road? I think that this does really well in both categories. You have a pretty decent amount of ground clearance. So, you know, getting over some bigger bumps if you're going off-roading uh, is helpful. I would say that on-road, uh, probably the most important thing is this big light here. Really nice and bright, which I think is important. Um, and secondly, it gives you road presence. Mm. And I know that a lot of people don't really understand what that means, but basically all I'm saying here is that this looks like it's a motorcycle, that it belongs on the road, and people are going to, and people in their cars specifically, are gonna give you a little bit more clearance than if you were Lance Armstrong cycling in the Tour de France, except that, you know, you don't have all the police cars, the French police cars protecting you. 
I like that it also has a really nice um, bright rear light as well. Right. Now it's not a brake light. It no. doesn't, you know, Just flash or get brighter when you hit the brakes, which is too bad. We've seen lots of bikes that can do it, but it is nice to have some visibility. And speaking of visibility, uh, always important to wear a good helmet. And we love the helmets over at Lumos. Let me turn mine on right here and show you what I'm talking about. Look at that bright light in the front good visibility in the back, and you can put onto your handlebars controllers, just let everyone know that you're doing left and right turns. It's, it's fantastic. So if you wanna check out a really safe set of helmets, go to lumos.com. The link is down below, and uh, we have some discounts for you down there as well. So wrapping up safety features, we have a nice loud horn. It made everything else quieter, so you can tell that it's loud. <laughs> um, I think that that should help get you know attention. It's not as loud as say a car horn, um, but it is definitely loud enough uh, to alert pedestrians. Yeah, good for bike paths and stuff, definitely. And I know it's not a safety feature, it's kind of a common feature, but the brakes, um, this does come with hydraulic disc brakes. Really like that. I love hydraulic brakes. I, it's, it's pretty much a necessity on a bike this heavy. Yes, yes. Um, I was trying out a bike the other day that didn't have hydraulic brakes had the manual cable brakes. Yeah, and you were so bummed. I was surprised, because I always remembered as a kid, you know, you could stop really fast, but with something this big and heavy, you need hydraulic brakes in order to get you that stopping power. Can I talk about some freebies they throw in on this? Sure. So um, this comes with the two fenders, which is I love to have on a bike. Super important, keeps the dust and rain and just whatever's on the ground keeps it towards the ground, not all over you. Now, I don't know if they're gonna change this, but right now they're throwing in a phone holder, they're throwing in some rear view mirrors, and they're throwing in a bike lock all for free. And those are really nice things because they're pretty much things you're gonna be glad you have. And we can't comment on them because they didn't send them to us, uh, but rear view mirrors are a must, especially if this is going to be a moped and you're gonna ride it in any sort of uh, situations where there will be cars. It makes you feel so much safer to have them. So even if you don't get them, I would order them. I wanna talk about the seat, it's one of my favorite features on this bike. I'm kind of a big fan of these big honking seats because a couple reasons. One, I can change my rider position. Mm -hmm. So maybe part of my ride I'm riding up close, part of my ride I want to move back a little bit. And secondly, if you want to put someone as a passenger, you have the room for it. Now this can hold 400 pounds. So most two peoples will fit on this. Yeah, I think that this could be a good option for maybe someone who's a little bit younger. You don't want to get them a motorcycle and you also don't want them to get them a car, um, but this can you know, allow them to carry their you know, their date or whatever. Um, you could put pegs on the rear, so that way the, the passenger has somewhere to put their feet. Uh, no handles or anything for the passenger, uh, but you know, you I just- just holding on for dear to, life. You have to wrap your arms around the the, the, the rider, which I think is nice. I, I, you know, and I think you probably could get a peg package to put on here to replace these two nuts, so. Definitely, definitely. Um, let's talk about the screen and the handlebars. So the 20 amp hour battery version, which is this one, comes with uh, kind of the lesser screen. Um, pretty bog standard. We've seen this screen before on some other e-bikes. I actually like it though. It's full color LCD, very bright, very easy to see in bright sunlight. Yep, it tells you you know all sorts of things about power. Um, you can cycle between your trip odometer, the total odometer. You can see the battery voltage, um, which can be very important. I want to talk about that for a second. It's a nice feature because it does have a battery meter with you know three green lights or yellow a light and a red, but to be honest, all lithium batteries have the same kind of problem, which is when they're like 80, 90%, great. And then all of a sudden they dropped to like 40% and you're like, what just happened? Mm -hmm. And that's because they're not that accurate. Whereas if you can see the actual voltage and get to know that number better for your bike, then you'll actually be able to plan your trip better. Cause you'd be like, Oh, I'm at 48.9 volts time to go home. Right. And important to keep in mind, if you are doing that, that the battery voltage is going to sag while you're using the battery, right. um, uh, IE, you know, using the motor. Once you stop using the motor, the battery voltage comes back up, it takes a couple seconds. Um, so, you know, depending on how you want to measure it, uh, it's important to keep in mind whether or not you're pulling power from the pack. It's got your standard Shimano 7 speed. Um, it's got a pretty decent handlebars. I kind of like this and it's got, I won't pull it, but it's got a, a throttle right there, which isn't a thumb throttle, it's a twist throttle. I kind of like that for a bike like this because it gives you more of that feel that you're on a moped. And you're gonna be using it a lot if it's this kind of bike. Keep in mind, if you're on a regular e-bike, you may not be throttling that much, but mm -hmm. here, you're gonna be just kind of wailing on that. 
Yeah, when it comes to throttles, I think that uh, safety is a big factor. Uh, twist throttles are kind of the worst, in my opinion, Why? for newbies. Because here's the thing, you go and you just grab it thinking it's a handle, um, and if you grab it high and then you adjust your grip, you're gonna be twisting that throttle and it could send the bike careening off into whatever's in front of it. Yeah, it's almost like it should be a different color, but you're right, that's just for newbies. Once you get used to it, it's not a problem. Yeah, I don't think that you'll have a problem with it. It's just that if you want your friend to ride it, be very careful, make sure that they understand that that's a twist throttle before they even approach the bike. Right. Um, again, the order when you're telling someone of what to do is, here's the brakes. <laughs> That's important. Brakes make you stop, then you show them where the throttle is, um, and then you let them get on the bike. Let's talk about the boxing and the shipment and stuff. Was there anything about that that stood out to you? It seemed like a pretty standard shipment. Everything came in good shape, nothing broken. Yeah, uh, the packaging was kind of a mess, all sorts of plasticky stuff. You're gonna have to basically devote a whole garbage bag to all of the packing material that comes with it. Um, the other hard part about this is it's 80 pounds. So when it comes to you know putting on the front wheel, uh, the whole bike is, you know, like 80 pounds. And you nice have to, to have it. a helper. It's going to take you about 40 minutes, I would think, to get it all out of the box and unpackaged and all that. Speaking of boxes, make sure you hang on to your box for at least two weeks because this has 14 day return. So if there's any problem, you can return it. It also has a one year warranty and free shipping. Um, so I wanted to ask you, I did ride it a little bit, but you rode it more than I did. Mm -hmm. um, how loud is it? Uh, the motor itself isn't that loud, but uh, most of the time you aren't going to be keeping up the pedals along with the motor speed, which means that you're going to get a clicking. Um, let me just show you what that sounds like, just so you get you know a sense. So that's top speed. And so even with the motor off, oh, that clicking, the clicking of the of the gears. I mean, I it's a common bike sound, but it's uncommon in the sense that it's, you know, that was going 28, 30 miles an hour. Uh, and most of the time you're only gonna hear that if someone's careening down a hill, not, you know, on a bike path. What I was hearing most of, and what I do most of the time with these fat tire bikes is the, the tire tires themselves on the road, right. which we weren't hearing right there. So just be, you know, know this, it's just built into the physics of this whole thing is that when you have a fat tire bike, there's so much rubber on road, which is a great thing for traction, mm -hmm. that you're gonna get a lot of sound. And so it's not gonna be a stealthy bike ride, it's, it's gonna be a little bit louder, which is fine for what it is. And if you're going over bumps and stuff like that, the other thing to keep in mind is that the, the chain is gonna rattle around. Um, the derailleur isn't like some kind of crazy mountain bike off-road thing. So it can you can get some chain slap and stuff like that. I don't think it's a big deal. Again, this is a moped. Yeah, well, it, and, and I wanna talk about build quality and stuff. I think it's a really good build quality when you consider that it's $16.99. Yes. Like, could it be better? Yeah, you could have it so that the welds were smooth and stuff like that, but honestly, most of the parts, I mean, the front suspension is not a great suspension, like nope. we mentioned. Um, the brakes are great, the mm -hmm. hydraulics, the Shimano shifter's great. Like, most of the stuff is great. Um, it's just not like a $4,000 bike. Just know that going in. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can see the welds here. They don't look particularly bad. They don't look particularly good either. I think they did a really good job design-wise, though, giving it, the, it a really cool look. I love the red stripe, um, and I love the fact that they actually added this to it because I think without this piece, mm -hmm. the bike would look like a whole different you know, beast. Yeah, I think that they really knew what they were going for. And I think that if that's something that you want, that's that's what you're getting. Um, it's, it's not a light bike. It's not something that you're supposed to pedal. It's really supposed to be, um, this is a moped, but you don't wanna have to get like a motorcycle license and register it and have to worry about getting pulled over and having to wear the proper helmet and all of this stuff that is going to impede you. I mean, we know people who bought like a legit moped, electric moped. Our state didn't even know that that moped existed, so right. they wouldn't register it. So, you know, if you're looking for like an electric moped and you're like, well, I don't wanna have to deal with all that stuff, this is a pretty decent option for an extremely good price. Yeah, just keep the pedals on it. <laughs> now, I do wanna talk about getting it around. If you have to like bring this to bike paths and stuff, it is heavy and we've been carrying around in the back of the pickup truck mm -hmm. as opposed to bike racks. Um, I think it would fit on one of our Yakima bike racks and uh, we'll put a link to that video right there. But for the most part, yeah, you're gonna wanna put this in a, like a pickup truck. This is a serious bike rack, a bike rack that's gonna go onto a hitch of a car. This is not one of those things that you can clip onto the trim of your car. No, you're gonna, you're probably gonna damage your car if you do that and then you need to transport it. So this really should be, in my opinion, a vehicle of its in its own right. It should be something that you are riding around, not something that you're necessarily transporting more than like 
from one house to another. But let's talk about if you live in the city or someplace where you got to get this upstairs or up an elevator. Forget or it. You think Forget so? it. Lock it up outside. There's plenty of good spots to lock it with a very good bike lock. You can remove the battery, bring it inside, keep the battery warm and charged. Um, and then when you're ready to ride, you bring the battery back down, you unlock this just like any other bike really, um, and put pop the battery in and away you go. I like this little uh, feature here where this is like a, a cowling to keep water and stuff off of the battery. That's interesting. I think that it's pretty interesting. Um, and again, the shape of it is, is really nice. Uh, it just pretty well designed, I would say, in terms of looks, in terms of efficiency and stuff like that. They threw it all out the window and that's fine. Yeah, so overall my thoughts are because I'm a big fan of this kind of seat and uh, fat tire bikes, if I was in the market for something sub $2,000, this would definitely be one of the ones I would look at. I would compare this to like the Hyper Scorpion, which weighs like 20 pounds more. Mm -hmm. um, they have new versions of that. And so I'd be looking at that. One thing I do like about this though, is that these tires are knobby and a lot of like the Hyper Scorpions have smooth tires. And to me, if you're going for big fat tires, you want the grip. And so what I found is that going to the smooth tires, uh, you're kind of giving up on all the benefits of the fat tire. So keep that in mind. Um, since we're talking about batteries, uh, one thing to think about is the cells that are in the battery. The manufacturer claims that these are Samsung cells. I like to see that. I don't know. We haven't taken this apart, so I don't know that for sure. But um, it's nice to see that they're branded name cells because this is the dangerous part, right, of batteries is that they're lithium ion. And uh, if you do something stupid to it, like pierce it or whatever, they can catch on fire. That's true of any brand. And keep in mind that if this was a gas tank, and it would, a remote it, would, it would catch on more fire. Same thing. <laughs> That's true. Um, and just remember taking care of your battery, as Jesse said, bring this inside when it's going to be cold outside. Don't just forget about it and leave it outside. Um, try not to always charge it to 100%. Try not to ignore it. If you're going to bring this in for like six months, don't just ignore the battery for six months. Keep it somewhere where you're going to remember to keep it charged up a little bit here and there. Um, because what we've seen with, with batteries that sit there for too long, um, especially if they get too cold, they just die. Yeah, the, the battery voltage can drop uh, to well below what the cells should be able to do. Um, you can sometimes revive them. I'm not sure if they're ever going to be the same after that. So always make sure to take good care of your battery. Well, we hope you enjoyed that review of the GeForce ZM. Uh, please let us know in the comments below what you think about it, questions that you have, things you want us to review. Make sure you hit the subscribe and like buttons. That's how we keep this channel going. That's how we bring more and more reviews to more and more people. And uh, again, let us know what you want us to review on this channel. It doesn't just have to be e-bikes. We do from batteries to solar panels to composters and let us know that's how we keep in touch with you guys thanks so much for watching now let's review